does your aim look like this? Well, I'm a two-time Call of Duty World Champion, and I'm here to help. We're going to be starting off with five pro tips to help you climb those ranks, so let's go. Tip number one is going to be controlling the actual recoil of a weapon. You probably wonder how these pros map people across the whole map with a Vaznev or an SMG and how they shoot so straight. Well, one of the biggest things is they're actually controlling the recoil on the weapon itself. Now, a lot of weapons have that vertical recoil where they shoot up. And if you're having too much horizontal recoil, which is basically side to side, you definitely need to change some of those attachments because it should not be doing that. So what is your number one goal when shooting a weapon or shooting a gun? You're going to want to slightly pull down. And this is going to be maybe a little weird at first. It kind of becomes muscle memory. Like for me, like I always automatically start pulling down as I'm shooting. But you're going to basically want to pull down on your mouse or your analog stick. And for mainly, it's probably going to be more controller players. You want to pull down on your analog stick just a little bit to really shoot that weapon straight. Now, like I said, a lot of weapons have that vertical recoil. And Call of Duty in general has more vertical recoil than, you know, most weapons. And it's just how it goes. So understanding this is very important. And at first, you maybe you might pull down a little too much. And it's that slight touch of pulling down and getting used to it is what's really going to allow you to shoot very straight and shoot people like this across the map very easily and impress people. The next thing you want to learn to do is centering. And this is a big thing in the pro league and a reason why the best players in the world snap the way they do. To explain centering in a simple way, it's essentially centering on the middle of your crosshairs in the middle of the map. And on top of that, centering on where you think your opponent is going to be. So if I'm running around the map and I'm running anywhere around the map, I'm centered always in the center of my crosshair, having in the center of the screen. That way, if someone comes around, you can see I'm already on my target. Now, if I'm centered on the floor or centered too high, I'm not going to be on my target. Now I have to move my aim and actually snap on someone versus having my aim already on him. If I'm centering like this on the floor... Now I have to look up and shoot. This is going to slow down your reaction time. This is going to slow down your snap, your time to kill in a, in a way. Because by the time you snap on someone, someone's already centered on you. And all they have to do now is aim in and to shoot. Centering is very important when it comes to hitting your shots. Because when you're centered on someone already, you no longer have to make that adjustment mid-fight or early on. You're already on your target, which is going to allow you to hit your shots easier. And this is definitely going to improve your aim. What do you think about it? It's very effective. So whenever you're playing a map and running around, you always, again, want to be center in the middle. But there's a few exceptions. If you think someone's going to be in a specific spot on the map and you're coming around a corner, then you can center differently. So, for example, if I think someone's in this hard point and he's laying down right here, instead of me centering, hold up, instead of me centering up and, and like, you know, just having to go down and by the time I look down, I'm dead. If I really, if my teammate says, yo, there's a guy laying down, looking at the door. Instead of doing that, I'm going to center low. That way, I'm already on my target. See how that works? So I just do this and snap on him. So there is a few exceptions when you want to change your centering. It's not like you're always going to be centering in the middle of your screen. There's times where you need to change your centering position. So for example, again, if someone I think is up top, I'm going to center high. I'm not going to center at the stairs. I'm not going to do this, right? I'm going to center up then go back down. Now I'm back in the center of my screen. And now if I'm going down the stairs, I'm going to go look down, right? So you're centering depending on where you're going on the map and on the information you have. I'm I'm like, usually I'm not going to just do this, right? I'm not going to center like this. If there's a guy up here, like, or even just here, like I'm dead every time, right? But if I'm centering going up the stairs like this, I'm ready for the fight. This is a, this is a exa perfect example of how I center these stairs right here. Every time I come into this room, I go like this, I center up. And then I go like this. And you can see as I'm walking up this whole staircase, I'm centered everywhere, ready for my engagement and ready to take out my opponent. Part of centering is kind of muscle memory and running around and just being mindful of it. Because at first, you know, even I myself slack on it sometimes. It takes a lot of effort to get really good at centering. But once you have it down, it becomes easy to do every map and every game. And then it makes a huge change into your gameplay. I've gotten so many messages in the past. People were like, app. Your centering tips has helped me become so much better. And trust me, it works. And that brings me to tip number three, where I'll be talking about three important settings to fix your aim. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is your sensitivity. Usually you want to play on a lower sensitivity. The highest I would recommend is eight. Do not go higher than that. It's going to affect your centering because this goes hand in hand. When you're moving around the map, once your, your sensitivity is too fast or too high, you're going to be moving. You're going to be swiping your controller around or your aim around. You're going to be twitching out a little bit. 
when your sensitivity is lower, you're able to kind of glide through the whole map and just center perfectly on where you need to center and always be on target. It's very hard to mess up your centering when it's when your sensitivity is slow. So this is important. This is why a lot of pro players play on a slower sense. It helps have more consistent aim and better centering. So when I was competing, I usually played on 661, which is like usually the average uh, sensitivity in the pro league and the CDL. You, so you can do that if you want. I like 770.85 for that little extra you know, speed to have some fun with it, but definitely a big part of it. Next for your aim assist type, I really recommend default. Black Ops was the wave at the start of the game, but with some nerfs on Black Ops the past couple months, default feels better. It feels easier and you definitely want to use that. And your aim response curve type, you definitely want it to be dynamic. Dynamic is, <laughs> it's been good the past couple of Call of Duties. Everyone runs it. I mean, it's just like, it goes from slow to fast. You're able to snap on people. It's super good. You got to be using it. Lastly, if you can, I'd really recommend to lower your right stick dead zone a little bit. If you have stick drift and you got to put it on 0 0.10, your aim is just going to be affected. And that's just how it goes. Maybe get a new controller if you can get one. But I recommend 0 0.5, which is a default. But, you know, if you can, you could go a little bit lower, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's actually a little bit more rewarding if you can get used to it because your aim responds a little bit quicker. Your stick responds a little bit quicker the lower it is. Now, I do start getting stick drift. I go low too low, so I don't like feeling that sometimes. So I just play on 0 0.04. Now, for tip number four, we're going to be talking about strafing and rotational aim assist. And this is a tip for my controller players. <laughs> so if you're a mouse and key, it's okay. You can still get the strafing tip in, I guess. But basically, whenever you're in gunfights... I usually am always moving and somewhat strafing, right? I'm never just sitting still and shooting. I'm always strafing and firing and shooting at the same time, just moving. And the reason this is so good is because, one, I can adjust my aim with my movement. So let's say I'm shooting a target here, and he starts moving around, and I start missing. I can strafe my shot into him, right? So I'm not just relying on my right stick. I'm relying on both sticks. I'm relying on my strafe to help guide my aim into the person versus just relying completely on my right stick. So if I'm in a head glitch and I can strafe around it, I will to help me get that extra, you know, aim assist, strafing. But sometimes when you're on a small head glitch, for example, if I'm just on this head glitch, then I'm not really going to move much, right? Because I want to stay on the head glitch. Sometimes I might hit like a little, you know, a little dance here, just moving back and forth. But I'm not going to try to strafe off the head glitch, right? Because you don't want to lose that advantage. But basically what rotational aim assist is, is when you move your left stick around, you kind of pull more aim assist on the person if someone's running in front of you, right? Versus if you just use your right stick. So this is something that's pretty effective, especially at closer ranges, where you definitely want to be moving both sticks just to get the full advantage of that aim assist. So don't forget, whenever you're in the middle of a fight or you're getting more engagements, hit that strafe, move around a little bit. Maybe the strafing speed on your weapon isn't that fast, but anything helps. And it's better than just standing still and just shooting your gun for the most part. Like, you want to be moving. Look at that. Aim is just worse there. And lastly, this is going to be important to help your aim and climb those ranks. If you're trying to get a higher rank and you are struggling, you need to get into more engagements. You need to shoot your gun more. You need to, you know, get into more gunfights. Simple as that. Now, a good way to do this is shooting bots as I'm doing right now. Starting up a bot lobby, you can put a timer for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and try to kill as many bots as you can. And you can kind of time yourself, right? You can kind of test yourself. You just do it every at least once or twice a day. And every time you try to beat that number you got previously. So if you do 10 minutes, you get uh, 80 kills. Next time, try to aim for 90. And the more you're probably going to notice a small difference in your aim, it's going to start to improve slowly. But the thing is, man, when it comes to aiming better, you, the four first tips I gave you are extremely important. And once you apply all of those, it's really just getting into more gunfights and practicing that, right? Getting that muscle memory down, getting that aim, uh, the aim sensitivity you have down. If you're changing your aim sensitivity to maybe slower because it was too high, you know, all of that takes adjustment. But I guarantee you, if you follow these things and get into more gunfights, and you can even start a bot lobby, like I said. Just play a little more playtime, more gunfights. It will improve you. Now, the pros about doing a bot lobby versus a public lobby. If you're playing a good players or you're, you know, you're playing against people using claymores, rocket launchers, it's going to be kind of hard to get into a lot of engagement sometimes in a pub lobby. But even though they are going to be utilizing movement a little bit more. So that is a good part of fighting like actual players versus bots. Bots kind of just like walk around. 
But, you know, it's more... The, the most important thing is just shooting your gun, right? Getting your aim on top. This is what we're aiming for. We'll be doing more tip videos. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It helps a ton. Let me know down below in the comments what other tip videos you, you guys would like to see. And as always, I stream at twitch.tv slash apathy if you want to catch me live. I am at top 250 rank, and we are grinding. Hope you guys all have a fabulous day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.